Many are asking the same question. How do I deal with life pressures? There is no clear direction for my life. No matter what you are facing, no matter how difficult life may get, there is triumph over tragedy, hope out of your hopeless situation. No circumstance, however big or dark it seems, can stand against the miracles of God. Tune in and be encouraged as you discover the keys that unlock the doors to a life of freedom and joy. This is Life Beyond the Moment with Doug Stringer. Welcome to another Life Beyond the Moment with Doug Stringer. It's good to have you with us again today. I'm really excited about the theme of today's program, Empowering Destiny. When you think about that, there's so many seeds of destiny in people's lives they don't even know about yet. And especially when we come to the revelation of the work of the cross and the power of the resurrection, there's a purpose for each and every one of us greater than what we thought we had for ourselves. You know, I think of the older Samuel who, when God called him to go find a king and anoint him to be king for Israel, everyone presented what they thought would be the best candidate. And yet he found a shepherd boy named David who was just tending to his father's sheep. There was something about him that even David himself did not see that was called forth to become the king or walking into his destiny. There's a destiny in each and every one of you. There's seeds of greatness when you come to the revelation of who Jesus is that he has for you that's a greater purpose than you have for yourself or could ever even imagine for yourself. Today we have a great friend, Catherine Alex, who I call Kathy, who is, was a part of our staff who was for 12 years and who had really been a blessing to us and somebody cares across the world. And today, she is a chaplain, also the religious coordinator for the Lafayette Parish Sheriff's Department and Correctional Facilities and Center. She is a well-respected leader there in Lafayette, Louisiana, and it's a pleasure to have her, a spiritual daughter, with us today. Catherine, it's great to have you. Thank you, Pastor. Man, it's Good been a be while. Here. Yes, it has. So I was telling somebody earlier I was going to not wear this jacket, but you're so classy all the time. I had to put a jacket on oh, it to wow. match up with you. Oh, you look great. I'm glad you did. <laughs> you have always been such a classy, classy lady. And, and, you know, you really taught me a lot when you worked with us for those 12 years. And even though we're friends, uh, you would always show a respect, and especially with other people around, you would say things like, oh, Pastor Doug or Pastor Stringer or Dr. Stringer. I said, oh, you don't have to call me that. She goes, no, we're friends, but in the right settings, I need to show that respect for the position that God has placed on you. And so thank you for that. You're welcome. Now, how did we first meet back in 1996? Um, I was watching uh, the Christian television, and so um, I saw you, and you were... Uh, just inviting people to attend Prayer Mountain, and I knew at that time that I needed to be there for 40 days. Yes, mm -hmm. and Prayer Mountain, for those that don't know, uh, we hosted for 40 straight days in Houston, Texas, and Houston's flatland, and so we don't have any mm -hmm. mountains or hills, but I found the highest place we could find. It was an old amphitheater. They had, it was an old dirt-filled place. They turned it into an amphitheater for concerts. We rented it for 40 straight days and called it Houston Prayer Mountain, and we had thousands of people from all over the world showed up during that 40 days to pray, to worship together, crossing our racial and denominational lines. And so it must have been on a program where I was sharing it about that coming up yes. that you said, there's something about this. And you said, I need to go to that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And yes. then, then after Prayer Mountain, what did, uh, how did you end up saying, well, you know, I need to go volunteer at the ministry. I end up, well, I did have this dream about you and Dr. Ed Cole, your spiritual father. Right. God showed me a vision of you, and I knew that there was some connection, divine connection. And so I volunteered for about a year and a half, and then I became a full-time employee. Well, there's, a, there's a lesson in that there, too. I mean, sometimes you might feel an inclination for something, but just like Abraham, we have to take a step of faith. Yes. For yes. God to open up our destiny. Yes, yes. And your step of faith was, look, I'm not getting paid for this, but I really feel called to this ministry. Yeah. And for a year and a half, you volunteered. And then yes. finally, we, we saw the light and said, well, you need to get on paid staff. <laughs> yeah, that was the best thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then so you saw us go through some great changes and growth and, and yes. the development of various outreaches. And you actually became uh, the director and coordinator of our outreaches for the ministry of Somebody Cares mm -hmm. in Houston and, and beyond. Yes. What are some of the things that you, that you were able to do to, be, to work well, with us? Um, the community would come. We were like the countless of Somebody Cares. And so people would come from all over Houston to our office to get help, mm -hmm. whether it was prayers or they needed food to eat, pay their utility bills, or even we directed them to other. We weren't just a ministry that did everything. 
but we were a ten, we were a ministry that had was a network, and we would direct mm. uh, people to different ministries in the city mm -hmm. according to their needs. But right there at Somebody Cares, what we did was that we ministered, we prayed for people, we paid their gas bill, you know, we paid their light bill. And, and so you were actually responsible for any time there was a need, we would get together, then you would actually connect the dots of our network of relationships. That's right, and that was so much fun. Well, I had I, a great time. I remember one time um, we did a, we rented out an empty facility at a mall and called it a Holiday of Hope. Yes. And thousands of kids were able to come <laughs> get free toys. They didn't have to come buy toys, yeah. they came and got free toys yes. in a real mall. And we had uh, Melvin Adams, who was the, with the Globetrotters, yes. former yeah. Globetrotter, and he did some skits for us. But you helped coordinate a lot of that as well. And tell us some of the, the warm memories of stories of lives that were impacted as you were working with us. Uh, I um, Just seeing the excitement of making Jesus known in a tangible expression, such as giving a toy to a kid mm -hmm. that would have never gotten a, a toy mm -hmm. during Christmas. Mm -hmm. and bringing them in, like you said, into that atmosphere. And also not, not just them, but some of the, their parents would come. So we would empower their parents, mm -hmm. you know, and some, that would let them know, just let them know that somebody does care. I remember one of the things that we talked about in our core staff was that a lot of times people say, look, we'll give you your needs met, but we, it was without dignity. Yeah. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to go, we went through the schools, we went to churches, and they pre-screened families that legitimately had a need, and with dignity, instead of coming, they brought a pass. Mm. So their children didn't even know that they were coming to get something that's free. That's right. They just knew that mom and dad was, was taking taken two to, to the, the toy mom. store. Yes, that's right. And many people said that our toy store was probably better than a lot of regular <laughs> toy stores. Yes. I think we, as volunteers, we had so much fun, more, you know, just experiencing the people and stuff. We, we just had more fun maybe than the parents, you well, know, just. You remember this too, when we, during Katrina, and 250,000 evacuees yeah, came to Houston. Yes. And 21,000 showed up at our doorstep. Yes. And you were right thrown in the middle of all that with this. Yes. And that was, it was a time that people from every religious background, every ethnic background That's were right. coming for help. And even though we're Christians, we gave a tangible expression of Christ, and you were thrown right in the middle of yes. that, ministering to people and to, trying to discern what their needs were. Yeah. And a lot of great stories came from that. And I was looking at some pictures of you today <laughs> of some of those meetings, but also we went back a year after to uh, Louisiana, to New Orleans, mm -hmm. and because uh, we had a lot of outreaches going during the Katrina as well and after Rita, also in Southeast Texas. But you went back there and you got to help cook. Yes, uh, uh, it, was, was it was good. called uh, Somebody Still Cares New Orleans. Yes. And uh, you went out there, you put your chef's hat on and started yes. cooking and volunteering. I really wanted that job. <laughs> I really, yeah, just to serve the people, you know. Yes. And stuff. Well, that's, that's a key point. You've, it's always been about serving people. Yes. What are some of the key lessons that you felt like that in your 12 years working with us have helped you and equipped you to walk into the fullness of your destiny today? Oh, my God. Um, being real. And also, the, you know, you taught the message of consecration, commitment, and action. And a consecrated life is a life given unto the Lord and a pure life. Mm -hmm. A life that says, you know, all I'm going to do is, all I want to do is please you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to live holy and I'm going to obey. And when, when you get that revelation of consecration, then you become committed yeah. and then you can serve mm -hmm. with a pure heart and mm -hmm. clean hands. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know you can touch lives. Amen. You've touched lives. Because people today, Pastor, they want the real thing. Amen. They want real. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of moves us into even, you were telling Jody, our vice president mm -hmm. the other day, what you're doing today as, as the religious coordinator for the whole county, for the, yes. for the Lafayette Parish, yes. for the Sheriff's Department, yes. the correctional facilities. It's a big responsibility, yes. and yet you've told us many times that it's kind of, you were equipped to do what you do now yes, based on the things you did to help serve during your years with us. Yes, yes, I, um, and I got equipped at Somebody Cares. You know, and, and when we're in there and we're doing the things of the Lord, we don't realize that the Lord is the journey that He is preparing us for our next. Mm -hmm. And so the things that I learned, and somebody cares, it was just everything that I've learned, I've been able to share, 
you know, like an example, the church is coming together, mm -hmm. the net that really works. Mm -hmm. You taught me that. Mm -hmm. And just getting churches involved out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I am so blessed. I am so blessed in our community that we have good partners and people that want say, hey, look, we want to do something. And it doesn't matter what denominations, mm -hmm. the Catholic. Mm -hmm. In fact, just two weeks ago, I got to honor the Catholics. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I learned that somebody cares. Mm -hmm. That's why I learned that I gave them the Divine Servant Award mm -hmm. and I was so blessed. I was blessed to be able to give them to mm -hmm. give them that award. But to see their faces, mm -hmm. they were crying. Mm -hmm. Some were crying, some were laughing. And it was like, they had never been mm -hmm. honored like this before. And so that's one of the things. And so uh, what we've learned together yes. in, in our journey through our ministries is that when we learn to touch the heart of people, yes. it opens their hearts to receive us and the message we want to present in the gospel of good news. That's right, that's right. And it also encourages them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, we have so many resources. I call the Lafayette Paris Correctional Center the wealthy place mm -hmm. because the churches have come together and say, you know what, we're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to empower the inmates. We are going to encourage them and it's going to be through resources mm -hmm. and we're going to be the ones that are going to give you the resources. They give it to me and you know I'm able to issue it out in the, in the parish mm -hmm. and so it's the church that works, the net that works. It really works. Yes, Amen. sir. Well, what would be like a, a basic responsibility? Because I know you're, you're overseeing all of these connections in mm -hmm. the Lafayette Parish. Yes. So what is what are some of the, the big responsibilities, some of the needs, and some of the things that God has given you to do that is helping to really minister to people that are in, in lockdown, mm -hmm. as well as to those who are serving those who are in, in prison? Oh, wow. I have to tell you, I am so amazed. I am amazed because, you know, you taught me that God has called us to be something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I have, I do the work of three people that used to do the work, you know, positioning. Yeah. God is positioning. Yeah, God has always given you that gift to do yeah, well, multi, multi people yeah, work multi, for Yes, multitask. So I'm able to uh, organize the schedule for people to come in and out of the sheriff's office. I also do an orientation with the volunteers. I make sure, you know, that they are accountable for their under pastor. I'm very strict about that, okay? <laughs> because, you know, the Lord, if now, he what, has- when Kathy was a keeper of the gate at our ministry, no one got anything <laughs> by her. She was the keeper of the gate. <laughs> Um, yeah. And if they wanted to get to me, she wanted to know, well, what's the purpose? And yeah. Well, I believe it's like this. You know, if the Lord w is going to trust me with 1,100 people that have made a mistake, then I can't just have anyone teaching them. Mm. have to be someone that, that's living it. You mm -hmm. know, we're not perfect. We're being perfected. But mm. their standards are high also. Yeah. And so I do an orientation, about, about an hour orientation. I also, I distribute the resources. We have what you call tailmates. So if an inmate wants a Bible and they they want different Bibles, okay, we have different religion, of course, you know, in jail, different denomination. So I have to make sure that they have it. They mm -hmm. get that, that I get that particular Bible for mm -hmm. them. But of course, you know, we just don't give it just like mm -hmm. that. They have to prove that they're, they have been practiced in mm -hmm. that particular well, denomination. I've noticed, Kathy, over the last few years as you've taken on these responsibilities that, um, at times, it's not easy to moving into new positions. Transition's never easy, but it's, it's a part necessary. of life. It's a necessary yes. part of life, isn't it? But uh, as you were sharing off camera a little bit too, that that initially you, they wanted you to wear a uniform. Yes. And then you realized, you know, that if you were going to bridge the gap between the inmates as well as to those coming in, mm -hmm. that there is a message being sent, and then you want to be able to get into the hearts of the people. That's right. What is it that God put on your heart that why you wanted to, to dress differently? and to go in there with a different kind of uh, environment? Well, you know, we uh, have to be strategic in what we do. We have to be able to, and that's what I thought, well, I need to meet them exactly where they are. And that's where the heart opens. Mm -hmm. You know, dress like, the, you know, dress, you know, modest and everything. Because if they, you know, people have uh, different uh, uh, thoughts about 
police officers, mm -hmm. right? And I am not a police officer, mm -hmm. you know. I'm more of a coach, right? Mm -hmm. And so I Although need, many police officers do come to you, don't they, for ministry yes, and prayer? And and yes, and it's wonderful, you know. Mm -hmm. We have to be available to all people, no mm -hmm. matter what their standards are. Yes. You know? Well, what are some of the, the key um, uh, things that you've learned? Because you really, when you think about 1,100 people are the inmates that you're responsible for, it's like pastoring. Yes. You're responsible for a pretty large congregation. Yes, yes. So there's a lot of dynamics. Are you seeing some great things that are happening through that and people's lives being impacted as a result? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we're empowering people. We encourage them, bring them hope. And we're educating people with the word of the Lord and, you know, sharing with them that there is an abundant life that's promised for them, mm -hmm. that they don't have to live like that, mm -hmm. and how that the Lord loves them. Yes. And the Lord is a merciful God. Yes. And He is ready and willing to meet them right where they are. Amen. Yes. What are some of the kinds of resources that are, are I know people we want to continue to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Others need to be praying for, for Kathy as well. What are some of the things that people can pray about specifically and some of the needs that maybe the, the parish has for uh, uh, the things that you guys are doing there to reach these inmates? Bibles, number one. We want to get a Bible. And uh, we have so far we've been so blessed that they keep coming in and coming in and coming in and just uh you know faith, books of faith teaching the word of god mm -hmm. that people need to know the word of god mm -hmm. and um, also just maybe encouraging magazines that will bring mm -hmm. hope mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. well these um any books or resources that want to be given you would, you would have to screen them first, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we, we're safe to know that before it gets by you, it has to be something that's appropriate. That's right. Yes, Good. sir. Yes, Good. sir. Well, the keeper of the gate again. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Well, you know, Kathy, I just am so proud of you. And, Thank you. Um, and we're just so honored because you still carry the DNA. I do, yes. Of somebody cares. And, 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 you know, it's not about the name. Remember, we used to joke about this, that <laughs> it doesn't matter if you call it somebody cares or nobody cares. Just live the gospel. Be the gospel. Yes. A lot of people want to, you know, they want to do church, but we need to be the church. Yes. We need to reflect Christ in a tangible way, as you shared earlier today. Yes, yes. So what are some of the things that, um, that we can do to, to stand with you and pray with you at this time in your life? Just continue to pray and continue to, you need to continue to be the man of God. You are, you know, and just, I would just say, continue to pray for me, that I will continue to do what God has said and continue to love. One thing about it is that we, as saints of God, we have to love people where they are. Mm -hmm. And um, I find that a lot in my experience that so many of the inmates have not been told that they're loved by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to not just say it, but as we give ourselves to the Lord and He pours into us, then we don't have to fake. It's something real. People want real. Mm -hmm. And they are attracted to the real deal. And mm -hmm. they know real. They mm -hmm. know fake and they know real. Amen. And I tell you what, as we begin to continue to submit to the Lord, and that's my, my prayer, that you would pray that I will hear the voice of the Lord. And of course, I've made up my mind that I'm gonna live a consecrated Amen. life. You know, but uh, that's, that's the most, is it prayers. You know? Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, Kathy, we have about uh, two minutes before we go into the transition in our break here. Mm -hmm. I want you just to look at those that are watching and into this camera over here and just begin to encourage people that there is a hope in Christ and that there's a destiny that they can walk into. They may not see their destiny now, but help call forth that destiny in their lives. Okay. Sure. I, I just want to share with you that I remember that um, Jesus spoke to me. And he says, Jeremiah 1 and 10, and I'm like, what is that? And he says, I want you to plug up, uh, pull out and rebuild. And the Lord wants you to do that. I believe that God wants you, that He wants to be the one that's gonna lead you into your destiny. But God doesn't only just do it like, just do it Himself. What He does, He used men and women to usher you into that place. My encouragement to you is that you would get under a leadership that can do that. A leadership that's Bible-based, a leadership that's true of truth because the Bible says that it's a true witness that rescue lives. As you submit yourself to the Lord and to your leadership, 
I promise you that God is going to guide you into your destiny. And sometimes the journey may look like, you know, may be hard, but as you stay spiritually focused, make the right decisions, and as you submit to God and know that He's with you, you will make it. Amen. Amen. That's good, Kathy. I don't know. No, it was great because that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit oh coming through you. You know, you're drawing from a well that yeah. never runs dry because it comes from a water source yes, that never sir. ceases. Yes, Amen. I, I want you to receive what Kathy just said, and I want you to know that mm. you may not feel like God. you can do what God's called you oh, to do, gosh. but in Christ Jesus, all things are possible. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Do you want to know the secret to living life well? In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40, God tells us, He says, You shall therefore keep God's statutes and His commandments which I command you today, that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all time. That promise is still true today. In this book by Doug Stringer, you will read incredible insights on how to apply this truth in your life today, so you can enjoy God's promise of living life well. Order your copy at somebodycares.org or get an ebook version through Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Now, Kathy, while we we're on that short break, you were sharing some things about what you're actually doing in outreaches at the correctional facility. Tell us some about, that's exciting, so I want to hear more about that. People need to hear about that. Oh my God, yes, during the Christmas holidays, what we do, we, the church have come together, the churches in the city, they come together, they get Christmas cards, and the stamps, the envelopes, everything, and we give them to the inmates so mm. that they can send to their loved ones. And it's not just English, Hispanics too, right? Awesome. You know, so it, it's just wonderful. And also, during Mother's Day, Every mother gets a bookmark, mm. you know, and also not only that, um, during the, uh, the Christmas holidays, we not only do the, the Chris Christmas card outreach, but we do what we call giving the inmates gifts. Mm. We give them toiletries and we also give them a book. Awesome. And uh, the ministries, some of the ministries and churches, they get together in Lafayette and they buy all these books. And I'm like, Lord, we are so blessed. And that is, I mean, every inmate, it's not just a few, but every inmate get a gift. Amen. Yes. Well, they're blessed because you're walking in your destiny, Kathy. Yes. And, uh, and I'm just so grateful that God has allowed us in His providence in His divine purposes, allowed us to interface together for you to be a part of the ministry for the, all those years. It was a, it's a gift to us, and you still continue to be a gift because I'm so proud of you as like a spiritual papa mm -hmm. when I hear about all these things God's doing in your life, to see where you came from and that hunger and desire for God to what you're doing today. God has really raised you up, and I'm just so proud of you, and you keep walking in that destiny. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, man of God, that's my offering to you. Mm -hmm. oh, dear. Amen. We love you. You know, we've been talking about empowering destiny. Now, how am I going to come out of that? That's tough because, you know, I mean, I just love Kathy. I love all those that God's brought our way and who, you know, though we move on to new assignments, we never change our relationships. Relationships define our destinies because the kingdom of God is built on relationships. And the degree of influence we have individually and corporately is determined on the level of those relationships. So even though we're doing, you may be doing something in one area or another, when you're interconnected, a part of something bigger than yourself, then the expansion of the kingdom is exponential. God has a purpose greater than you may think for yourself right now. There's a destiny God's calling you, you out into. You may not feel comfortable, you may not feel like you're qualified, but if God calls you and God qualifies you, it's more than enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reminded of a scripture in Acts chapter 26, in uh, verse 15 and 16, and this is when Paul uh, was Saul, before he became Paul, was, and telling the story about when he was Saul and how the Lord appeared to him. And in verse, six, in verse 15 it says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He's speaking to Paul when he was Saul. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, 
to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which you I will yet reveal to you. When I look at that, every one of us who've come to the revelation of Jesus, I've revealed myself to you with this purpose. So Jesus says to you and says to me, says to all who get a revelation of who He is, of the work of the cross and the power of the resurrection, that He revealed Himself to us, gave us the revelation of Himself with a purpose. So in other words, whatever purpose we think we already have, when we come to the revelation of Jesus, He gives us an anointing and a commissioning and an authority and a purpose greater than what we could ever imagine for ourselves, a destiny for your life when we surrender to His call. And then He says with this purpose, to, be a, uh, to make you a minister and a witness of the things you have seen and of the things you have not yet seen, or the things He's yet to reveal to you. At that moment of greater purpose than you have for yourself, that place of destiny God's calling you into, He also calls you to be a minister. What is a minister? Kathy said it earlier, it's not about just get being behind a pulpit, pulpit preaching, but being a minister, the Bible says that a minister is to be a minister of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. When we come to the revelation of the work of the cross, we're called with a destiny to cross our racial and denominational barriers, to cross our places of comfort, our comfort zones, as Kathy said earlier, and to begin to be a minister of reconciliation. We've been reconciled to God through Jesus. So likewise, we need to be reconcilers to other people. How do we do that? Be a tangible expression of Christ to people, which moves into, Jesus said, I've called you to be a minister and a witness. The Bible says there's true witnesses and false witnesses. Yes. Proverbs 14, 25 says, a true witness rescues lives or yes. saves souls. You're called with a purpose greater than you know. You're called to be a minister of reconciliation and you're called to be a tangible expression of Christ to others, a witness that knows how to rescue lives and yes. save souls. This is not something that we can do on our own. It's, it's given to us by the grace of God. God's grace, abounding grace upon your life when you come to the revelation of His love is to help call out, not only walk into your destiny, but begin to identify, not based on outer appearances, but to begin to call out the destiny of other people. That's what Kathy's doing at the correctional service there in the Lafayette Parish of the Sheriff's Department there. Calling people who have no hope, fatherless generation, have no sense of purpose, calling them into their destiny. Whatever place of ministry God's called you to be, God's called you to be a witness that rescues lives. Now, I was thinking of a story, as Kathy was sharing earlier, in one uh, county in Florida, that they're giving away copies of my book, Who's Your Daddy Now?, to many inmates. It's like the, one of the hottest books they want to see. I actually met a young man who's out of prison now recently, while I was in Florida, who says, that book changed my life, and today I've got a spiritual father help me to walk in my destiny. I got another e a message the other day that in Texas, at a correctional facility, a prison for women, over 100 women received a free copy of my booklet, Who Was Jesus? Who is Jesus? Because many people want to know, who is, is He really who He says He is? So from Who's Your Je Who Is Jesus booklets to Who's Your Daddy Now to Somebody Cares Books, the Bibles, we got a call of a man who got his first Bible, was one of our Bibles, that he, and he wanted another copy all these years later. You see, what we're called to do is help call people into their destiny, then to empower them by equipping them with the resources to grow in their destiny. Well, time has run out. God bless you. Go in peace, and may the Lord Jesus Christ grant you the desires of your heart.